Hello! I thought I'd do the social media questionnaire. I'm going to be doing it on my webcam. Uh, occasionally I might have to scroll and look at the questions. So the first question is, what was the first social network or online community that you have joined? And I don't know which one was first, specifically, but I remember that I, I had MySpace, Bebo, Pixo, and I had free webs for a bit. Yeah, I think those were probably the first social communities online networks that I had an account for. They weren't very good though. Um, there was a lot of hate comments. I don't know why I stuck around. <laughs> Which online communities are you now part of? Well, I've got, I've got a YouTube account, I've got a Facebook account, I think I've still got a Twitter. When did you join YouTube and why? I don't know, it was probably uh, four years ago or something, I don't know the exact date. But I joined it because I thought it was a hosting website for videos, like um, how you host things on photo bucket. Uh, like I put pictures and stuff on photo bucket if I wanted to send a picture to someone. And um, you could put videos on photo bucket but they, they were quite slow to upload. Um, so I started using YouTube to put videos on, um, like, well, the first videos I ever put on YouTube were from Dungeons and Dragons, the game online. I had videoed, um, the, uh, yeah, one of those software things to, that I downloaded to video my game playing, um, because we were playing a game with different spells and so it was, so. Uh, yeah, but that's I first started using YouTube for those purposes, but I don't do that anymore. I, no, it has changed. What do, do you enjoy about the YouTube community, and what are your least and most favorite things? I suppose my most favorite things about the YouTube community are obviously that you can have comments and likes and stuff because those are obviously imperative to having a community is the ability to communicate and interact. My least favourite things are the facts that some people you're not allowed to interact with um, some ways. Uh, not because those people themselves have said not to, but because other people. Like, um, a couple of days ago I was on a video by Charlie is so cool like and someone had asked him a question about his girlfriend like they'd said oh, it was just a it was nice nice comment like oh is that your girlfriend she looks cute you look good together and that's it it's just the whole comment there wasn't anything else it's just a nice little comment about his girlfriend and then someone else had replied to that not Charlie himself but someone else entirely had said why is it any of your business um, and they said, oh, I was just asking. Um, <laughs> and they said, oh, I hate all this celebrity culture, being, you know, getting involved in his life and blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, if you saw anyone and asked, said, oh, you, you and your girlfriend look cute together, they, them, they themselves would probably say, oh, thanks. But for some reason we've got to the stage where there's certain people within the YouTube community where if you ask them a question, not they themselves, but other people will attack you for it. Even though they're still a human being and you, you should still have the right to talk to them and ask them a question, really. Um, I think I'm a bit more cautious when I type comments on uh, the videos of big YouTubers because you know that if you say the wrong thing they themselves might not care at all but their fans will attack you or whatever well, you'll get a hundred comments from like their group of fans saying how horrible you are and how blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> that's just a ridiculous part of the community I think whereby you have to, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's happened to me where I've put a comment on someone's video asking them a question or something, and then I've got loads of comments back saying, Oh, it's none of your business, get out of here. Blah, blah, blah. 
and it's just a question. It's only a question. It's just ridiculous. It's just a question. I mean, if, if you ask me a question, I as a person would then be able to choose whether or not to respond to that question. It's not like it's a hate comment or something, you know, it's a question. What changes have you noticed within the community in recent years? I don't think I have noticed any changes in the community really. I suppose there's more people who are selling t-shirts and things than at the beginning. Oh, it's starting to rain. Uh, yeah, but yeah, people still talk, people still make videos, everything's fine. Oh, there's another thing I don't like in the communities. Every every now and then, uh, some some of higher up YouTubers, I guess, will start complaining that the community is dead or it's dying. Everything's dying. YouTube is dying because it wasn't like it isn't like for them how it was in 2005 or whatever. I don't know. Um, and I think here yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's definitely still like that. They're just not looking in the right places or they're not interacting as much. Um, so I feel like they've changed, but the community, you know, it's still here. People are still talking. People are still making videos. Stuff like that. It's still ticking over. <laughs> if you make videos, what inspired you to start making them? As I say, I started by just hosting, just using it as like a hosting website for videos, or just like normal videos, videos from gaming or um, if I I had a video of my kitten Sunny, I think which I wanted to show to my family or something and so I put it on here and then um, I think it was just before university or just after university started somewhere around that time I started to I started to realize more about the potential of YouTube um, in regards to having a community or like talking to people, you know, he, social interaction and so forth. And I started to think that I could talk to the camera as a method of um, becoming more used to being able to talk and more confident. Um, you know, just being able to talk more. And uh, I guess that will change as time goes on again. Uh, how important is your subscriber count to you? Um, subscribers are people who uh, decide to subscribe to follow your channel, you know, so they get um, told when you've made another video. And that sounds good. Um, but the subscriber count isn't important to me at all. Because what I've found is that the people who are subscribed to me aren't the people who comment and watch my videos which seems weird. Um, like, if I looked through my list of subscribers, I see closed channels, channels with hardly anything on them, uh, people that I don't recognise the names of, stuff like that. Um, you know, and some people who write comments to me, I don't even see them in the subscriber list. Um, but that, yeah, I've got such a small number of subscribers that it can be quite disheartening to think about the subscriber count because um, if I just thought about the subscriber count I'd, I'd just see less than 200 and I'd think oh I'm not getting very very much and most of these channels aren't real channels and stuff you know there's just hardly anything but then if I actually look at the videos that I make and stuff then I can see that people do comment occasionally and I do get higher views on videos than I do subscribers um, which is a nice thing to think about I think because it shows that I have the potential essentially sometimes to get a high number of views and stuff 
I don't know how that happens, just occasionally at random a video will get more views and seemingly at random, I don't think it has a rhyme or rhythm to it but you know there's a past precedent for me getting views but there's no past precedent for me getting subscribers I guess it just is not something even worth looking at to me. Um, what's worth looking at is the view count and then I can uh, foresee what people like watching because you get to go oh that video there got a hundred views and that video there got four thousand views so therefore maybe people prefer this type of video over this type of video and then you get to think and that's quite that's like constructive criticism or something isn't it it's like something you can think about and work with and think about how you can improve with and think about whether you want to take on board, but your subscriber count you can't do that with. You just see a number and that's it. Um, I suppose it's different if you have loads of subscribers. Because if you have loads of subscribers, you can look at the list and see what type of people subscribe to you. Um, but if you don't have many, many subscribers, then all you get to go on is views, I guess. Mainly because then you can use those views proactively to indicate what's liked and what's not. I suppose views shouldn't matter either because they're just numbers, whatever. But it's, I guess it's still nice to get some views. And, you know, it's even nicer to get comments though because that's like your people to talk to and interact with and the community things come from comments. but. They definitely don't come from the number of subscribers. That's uh, not important. Next question is, what is your opinion on advertising um, on videos? Do you think people are becoming sellouts? I think that the, the word sellout in this context is offensive, to be honest. Um, because it's saying that if someone makes a video and they put adverts on it and they make money then they're a sellout and that's that's not how selling out works um, for example if if someone was in school and they really really liked making things and they, they made things and made things and then when it came to choosing the subjects they picked something like engineering and then they went with that, maybe they did an apprenticeship or whatever, I don't know. Um, and then after, after a while they got a job in a factory or something and they started making things there. And then they, they were paid for that. Are they a sellout? Are they selling out because they make money for what they do now? No. Okay, and there's another example. So if someone was in school and they really, really liked the idea of helping people and uh, you know, saving lives and things, and they start learning medicine, and you know, maybe they do go on first aid courses, and, and then they start doing higher education, and later in life they become a doctor, and they're paid for being a doctor. Now, are they a sellout because they're no longer doing it just for saving lives and just for the, just because they're a nice person who wants to save lives? Are they now a sellout because they're not just doing it for the helping people, they're doing it for the money as well? Is that selling out? No, that's getting money for what they do. Um, I think it's quite offensive because we live in a world where you need money to buy food with and stuff. You can't survive without it, really, essentially, because you would, you would, you don't even have space. Nothing is provided without money. Everything is sort of sectioned off and a product. Um, so essentially what I was saying is if you're an artist or a video maker or anything like that, then you should just do it for the fun and all that and you shouldn't earn money and you should just go starve or something because it's not a real job. <laughs> it's a horrible way, way of using the word sellout. Just 
for all the hard work and stuff you put in if you're doing nothing that's basically what it's saying no that is not selling out that's just doing your job essentially getting rewarded for doing hard work and so forth most of the time I mean not all the time Some pe sometimes people are paid for easy work but um, most of the time it's just being paid for doing your job and um, whatever that's fine if you get to do a job that you like that's brilliant that's not selling out selling out I guess to me is when you become um, just commercial and corporate where you're saying people have to pay to see me and every video is going to be a product placement and stuff like that and you're just you know, you're hidden behind an agent and no one can reach you or whatever, you know. Where you've become just about the money. And you wouldn't even help someone if it was your day off, you know. You would never help someone if it wasn't for money. Then you're completely a seller because life isn't just about money. So what's the next question, even though the video is pretty long? Hmm. The next question is What impact do you feel that YouTube has on society? Um, uh, YouTube has the impact of providing an area to host things, an area to host a community. and. In some ways this is good because there's a place where we can host a community and host creativity and stuff. But in some ways this is bad because we're hosting a community in a way of which I'm still sitting alone in my room in this box and you're sitting alone in your box over there miles away. Um, rather than hosting our communities in a way where we're all in the same room, we're hosting them ages apart and there isn't the touch intimacy that there is in uh, that such thing but that's not YouTube's fault I guess because Facebook and other social networks online also do that <laughs> mainly it's a good thing because um, if you if only communities were hosted in ways where we're all together then if you were in a place where the community was bad you wouldn't be able to reach out so far and get some people who were you know you were provided with such a wide wide community online that if you're in a bad community online you just move to a different one Whereas if there's just communities in real life, and you're a bad one, you're just stuck with it. <laughs> so it's good and bad, but yeah. <sighs> it does mean we're all kind of separate. I think that's kind of it. We can hope. Yep, so that was it, I guess. Social medias and all of that.